so today's given topic to me is diabetes and bond as all of us know diabetes is a pandemic disease worldwide prevalent and more than 450 million people are suffering from diabetes as the longevity of diabetic patient increases there is a more and more complication also increase associated with diabetes so fracture is one of important entity that is also found significantly in diabetic patient and despite of being preserved or increased bmd the risk of fracture is increased in type 2 diabetic as well as type 1 diabetic patients so studies has revealed that the fracture risk either it is at hip or non hip region it is increased in type 1 diabetes by 4 to 6 fold and 2 to 3 fold respectively while it is in type 2 it is around 1.5 and 2 fold increase respectively and fracture related consequences are also worse in diabetic patient as compared to non diabetic so this is the systemic meta analysis of major 12 study that revealed that the overall risk of fracture in type 2 diabetes is around 1.7 times higher as compared to non diabetic population similarly in a type 1 diabetic patient the meta analysis of six study reveal the relative risk is around 6.3 times higher as non diabetic patient so fracture burden in diabetic patient as per whi data it increases the risk of fracture at every site but most common site of fracture is hip pelvis and upper leg followed by foot bone and risk is increased at every place so this is a study uh, conducted at the pgi in which they found the prevalence of osteopenia and osteoporosis around 40 and 33% individual who have suffering from type 2 diabetes and they also give the predictors of fracture so in the predictor of osteopenia and osteoporosis that may lead further future fracture among that female has 5. nine odd ratio for the osteopenia and osteoporosis increasing risk age is another risk factor normal body mass index is another and most common risk is use of pioglitazone that is around 10.6 odd ratio having for the osteopenia and osteoporosis so come to the diabetes and bone health bone remodeling is compromised both in type 1 and type 2 disease as it is low bone turnover state and it occurred due to the alteration in the micro architecture of the bone it happened due to the increased cortical porosity a small cortical area and decreased tensile strength of the bone bmd and frax both underestimate the fracture risk in diabetic patients so it is not reliable and we should use correction factor for that and fracture risk reduction should be an important goal in the management of type 2 diabetes as we have other important goal in the diabetes like blood pressure cholesterol ldl and tg similarly we also have the fracture risk prevention tool as well so come to the mechanistic insight of the bone disease in the diabetic patient so it occurred due to the impaired glucose insulin homeostasis and it has direct as well as indirect effect in the direct effect it impaired the function of osteoclast and osteoblasts so both function is diminished in diabetes patient and indirectly it also affect on the muscle so muscle weakness may lead to the altered anabolic signaling and deposition of the advanced glycosidin end product may lead to the abnormal collagen cross linking that may impair the bond remodeling and biomechanics and bone vasculature also altered due to the uh, endothelitis of the distal bone end and that may lead to the decreased vascular supply to the bone and it may lead to the altered micro architecture and that may lead further fracture so this is the graphical or pictorial depiction of the type 1 versus uh, type 2 versus healthy diabetic bone disease in which we found that the number of osteoclast osteoblast is reduced and there is a more and more adipocytes and there is a more advanced glycosin and products deposition in the bone that may lead to the abnormal cross linking and there is a increased cortical porosity and decrease 
per area bond strength so it may lead to the decreased tensile power of the bond so these are the three main issue bond strength bond quantity and bond quality so uh, quality so all are impaired in diabetic patients so this is a pectoral diagram that shows that at the similar bmd diabetic patient have higher risk of the fracture and utilization of insulin further increase the risk of fracture especially in the women as compared to men so we should use correction factor for predicting accurate fracture risk by adding 0.6 so if suppose one patient has observed t score of minus 2 then it should be minus 2.6 for calculation of the fracture risk so we have different modality to assess the quality and quantity of the bond in the osteoporotic fragility fracture with or without type 2 diabetic patient we have endantometer as well as xro x ray micro focus ct system so these are the basic micro uh, micro architectural difference between the type 2 and as well as control individual and we found that trabecular thickness as well as the trabecular number significantly reduce in the diabetic patient as compared to non diabetic so what are the determinants of bone health in diabetic patient the duration of diabetes poor glycemic control and associated complication as well as anti hyperglycemic agents that we have used in the treatment of diabetes are determinant for the bone health so as the duration of diabetes increase the fracture risk is increased so this is depicted in this uh, table uh, so the risk of diabetes individual who have or experience the fracture increase with the duration of diabetes so glycemic control is another important risk factor for the fracture as the individual who have poor glycemic control are more prone to get fracture so associated complication like like diabetic retinopathy diabetes duration and utilization of the insulin blood glucose level and presence of the cataract these are the another important associated comorbidity that individual with type 2 diabetes usually have so these are the if present may increase further risk of fracture so come to the drug that are used in the diabetes and how they affect the bone health so come to the glitazones that are important drugs that usually increase the fracture risk that has been evident from the uh, adopt study in with the rosiglitazone and proactive study with the pioglitazone we have 22 rct that confirm the atypical and as well as osteoporotic fracture risk increase and two fold higher risk in pre and post menopausal women the reduction in bmd at hip is 1% and lumbar spine is 1.1 with the duration of one year utilization of the glitazones so reduced bone formation as well as increased bone resorption is the important inciting mechanism and affected individual who are using pioglitazone may develop this fracture risk because of it increase osteocyte and promote the production of sclerostin and dkk1 that and rankle dkk1 actually involved in the wnt pathway that is important in the bone formation and difference cesn of primitive mesenchymal stem cell to the adipocyte is also promoted by the glitazone so these are the another mechanism and simultaneously glitazone also reduce the androgen and estrogen level that further increase the osteoporosis and osteopenia the fracture risk is similar to non user after discontinuation of therapy that is evident in accord study so this is another study that shows the individual who are using pioglitazone have lower testosterone level as compared to placebo so come to the sglt2 inhibitors that how they affect the bone so in the canvas study the risk of fracture especially in upper limb and ribs increased with the canagliflozin the order ratio was 1.23 and there is also increase the fracture at the upper limb as well as rib and increase the bone loss at the hip by 1.2% in two year study 
while in the empagogue study there is no increased risk of fracture has been captured with the empagliflozin and similarly in the declared tb there is no increased risk of the fracture observed with the dapagliflozin although the incidence of fall increase due to the decrease intravascular bolling so come to the another agent that is incretin based therapy both osteoclast and osteoblast express the glp1 receptor animal data shows increased tubular but not cortical bone mass with the exenatide and liraglutide liraglutide decrease the fracture risk order ratio is 0.38 means there is a significantly decrease the risk of fracture in the individual who are using liraglutide while the risk little bit increased with the exenatide and to large obvious observational study there is a no increased risk with the glp1 agonist observed and dpp4 inhibitor there is a no any risk increase for the fracture in type 2 diabetic patient so come to the metformin we have animal data that shows the utilization of metformin increase the bmd it occurred due to the ranox and amp activation and it also inhibit the adipogenesis through amp kinase and mtor pathway it decrease the osteoclast development and improve bone micro vasculation so overall metformin has beneficial effect on the bone health and it is also evident in the adopt trial there is no increase risk of fracture has been observed in the metformin versus glimeclide group so come to the sulfonylurea sulfonylurea has limited rct that demonstrate the risk of uh, fracture risk although glimeclide increase the osteoblastic differentiation in red but human data is lacking and there is a conflicting result regarding the fracture risk and sulfonylurea increase fracture risk probably because of hypoglycemia once patient develop hypoglycemia there is a more risk of fall and fall may precipitate the fracture in the individual who are at the high risk means individual who are lean and thin then they may get fracture but sulfonylurea per se does not increase the risk come to the insulin insulin is a anabolic to the bone health but study shows that with the utilization of insulin the risk of fracture is increased so it is again because of concurrent hypoglycemia and diabetes in diabetic individual utilization of insulin further suggest that diabetes is in advanced state so this may be the conflicting points that may cause increased risk of fracture in insulin group so come to the vitamin d vitamin level tend to be lower in type 1 as well as in type 2 diabetic patient obesity may contributory factor for vitamin d deficiency and calcium and vitamin d supplementation should be given to all patient who are at risk for the fracture to minimize the fracture risk so come to the summary of anti hyperglycemic drug on the fracture insulin definitely increase the bmd as it is a anabolic but fracture is increased because of hypoglycemia and advanced diabetes condition sulfonylurea bmd effect is not known and fracture is is per se not increased but due to the hypoglycemia fracture it increased due to the increase in the fall metformin has neutral effect glitazon definitely reduce bmd and increase the fracture risk glp receptor agonist especially liraglutide increase the bmd and fracture is does not affected while in exenatide there is a little bit increment in the fracture risk as well and dp4 inhibitor is neutral at the point of bmd increment and fracture risk increment and sgl2 definitely decrease the bmd and increase the fracture risk so strategy for the fracture prevention in type 2 or type 1 diabetic patient all subjects with high fracture risk should avoid glitazones as well as sgl2 inhibitor and all patients should have good glycemic control appropriate address to the diabetic complications especially neuropathy autonomic neuropathic dysfunction cataract and fall prevention should be adopted in all individuals and optimal calcium and vitamin d intake should be ensured in all diabetic patient who are at risk and weight bearing exercise should be advice and cessation of the alcohol and tobacco should be advised to all individuals so does fracture management differ in diabetic patient answer is yes because bmd 
and flex score underestimate the fracture risk in type 2 diabetic patient use of tbs may be more rewarding and lower turnover state in diabetic lead to the concern for the utilization of bisphosphonate however the bisphosphonate sums and recombinant pth have similar anti fracture efficacy in diabetic patient as compared to non diabetic and fracture risk assessment should be important goal in management of type 2 diabetes or diabetes with osteopenia or osteoporosis at the conclusion patient with diabetes have increased risk with the worse fracture related outcomes bmd t score and flex underestimate the fracture risk in patient with diabetes newer modality like tbs and hr pqct may have more predictive and actually predict fracture risk majority of anti diabetic agents have neutral effect on the bone health however the glitazones and sglt2 inhibitors should be avoided in high risk individual beside the hvnc ldlc hypertension and lipid fracture risk reduction should be a goal in the management of diabetes with this i thanks and if there is any question i will be happy to answer thank you for patience here